Brian from Are You Game. And I'm Eric. And today we're going to do something a little different. Oh man, it's just a long quest. Um, so, we're going to have a discussion about Halo. And as you can see, we're playing Halo Reach. And Eric, why are we playing Halo Reach? Because the other ones take too long to download. <laughs> and because Halo 5 doesn't have split screen. Because they hate the original gamer. So, I guess we could start with, uh... We can start with the, the for what's your first, first experience with the Halo series? Oh boy. Uh, Halo 3 was the first game I actually played. Uh, and I never played the campaign. I just, uh, played the multiplayer uh, with some friends. Um, and I was actually super bad at Halo at first because when me and my friends would play, we would turn uh, gravity and all that all the way down and uh, make ourselves super strong and have fun. So when I first started playing with Brian, I was terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my first whole game was Halo 3. When did you play Halo 1? Uh, not until Master Chief. Halo Spree. So, oh wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, my first experience was actually Halo 1. And I remember, I remember this very clearly. Uh, we have this friend named Lauren, or we used to have this friend. But um, he was the only one out of all of us that actually owned an Xbox, the original Xbox. So I remember that for his birthday party, he was given Halo, and me, William, and Mark Quinn. Oh my God! And Lauren, and all of us started playing Halo, and it was, it was groundbreaking. At that age, let's see, oh man. I don't even remember how old I was. <clears throat> Probably like maybe 13, maybe somewhere around there, so about a decade ago. I might have been younger. It was the best experience of my life. Never seen a game like that before. There was nothing like it, like the aliens and the graphics back then. I mean, you look back now and you're like, wow, this is like Minecraft. And that's what you think about it as. But back then, it was, it was crazy. It was groundbreaking. And uh, I just, it was... I thought it would be my favorite game series forever, but that has most definitely changed. Killing spree. Double Mine. kill. Uh, besides, maybe one or two So, um, when did you play Halo 2 also with the Master Chief Collection? Yeah, Master Chief Collection was the first time that I played Halo 2 all the way through. Um, 2 is definitely my favorite, I think. Yeah, two's really good. Um, the being able to play as the Arbiter and all that was the coolest thing. Um, especially since uh, I like a lot of the lore in Halo, and I like all, all the lore of the Sengelis and stuff. Um, so that was pretty cool game. He was super into that. And it was also uh, a change from just playing as the Master Chief. One. Yeah. Or if, like me, you don't play the second one until Master Chief Collection came out. And Which is wielding... fine, because they had the remastered cutscenes in that Yeah, that was amazing. And dual wielding guns was oh, right. the best thing ever, and I'm so disappointed that it hasn't been in one game. Speaking of Halo 2, the multiplayer system in Halo 2 <laughs> was phenomenal. If I had to pick one of my favorite multiplayer sort of basic systems in an online game, it would probably be uh, how they did the leveling with Halo 2, and you could go up and down, and I don't know, it was just great. Also, the balancing weapons, I mean, besides the dual building, because that was pretty, they got pretty crazy. <clears throat> uh, the balancing of the weapons seemed really good, too. Have you played uh, Halo 3 multiplayer? Uh, yeah, not as much as the other ones. Um, I tried three on Master Chief Collection, and I liked two. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, oh, oh. one better, honestly. Uh, my first experience with Halo 3, that was the first one I actually bought myself. And that was, I had internet then, I think. I think I had internet then. Uh, it was the first time I was actually able to play an online Halo game that wasn't at a friend's house. I loved the story in Halo 3. I thought it was more exciting than the story in Halo 2. But, I don't know. I felt like it was a little rushed, maybe. 
It's not bad. Uh, I think the multiplayer is eh. It's eh. It's pretty much the best way to describe it. It was fun, but it wasn't like sustainable fun. Um. Yeah, three is definitely uh, maybe like my fourth favorite game. Um, just the the flood. Yep, that's that's um, a thing. So that was that was fun times. So, uh, definitely, the Prometheans are definitely the most hated enemy. That hated. So let's talk about Halo Four. So you had Halo Four uh, when you when it first came out, right? I think we both did. Yeah, that <laughs> yep. was the first game that we both had. We did. First game out. Yeah. What was uh, what was your favorite part about Halo Four? Um, I feel like the multiplayer, um, until, until it had been out for a while. It, when, when, when Halo 4 first came out, multiplayer was great. Um, over time, though, it got pretty crap because we were doing a, uh, with the voting system. And all Haven. The DLC and you stuff would Halo. play Haven 15 times in a row. There was no doubt that that would happen. Well, yeah, that's the problem, is, is, um... Especially with Halo 4, because that was the first one that actually played a lot of multiplayer. After a while, when the DLC started coming out, if you didn't buy the DLCs, you were stuck playing the same map over and over and over. Yes, and everyone always chose the same map. There was no differentiation. So I stopped playing Halo 4, that's pretty much why. Until Master Chief Collection came out, and then they added the functionality to be able to mix mix and match game types with, like, across all games. Yeah, that was, that was cool. So, um, Halo 4. So, Halo 4 for me, what I I love two things about it. I really like the multiplayer, and I didn't like the multiplayer because of, like, the maps and all that. I just felt like the way it flowed was nice. Uh, I also really liked the DMR. I liked the fact that, you know, there was different... I don't know. It was just... It was not typical Halo multiplayer. It was fun, and they did a really good job on the way the maps were built. I mean, even though you played the same maps over and over, they were still built really well. The second thing about Halo like, were the weapons. The scatter shot, I love the scatter shot. The light rifle, I love the light rifle. I really liked the new weapons, I just didn't like the enemies that they came with. Although, I, I would like to admit that I do like the Prometheans more than the Brutes. I hate the Brutes. I hate them. Really, I love the Brutes, uh, compared to the Prometheans especially. I, the Prometheans just feel too... Cheesy? <laughs> yeah, almost cheesy. I was I'm, I was gonna say too sci-fi, uh, which is funny because Halo is a sci-fi game. Because <laughs> it's Halo. But it feels too cliche. Yeah. To have robots be the enemy when you have such a great um, story and and like lore with the Covenant and like it feels like it could actually be something that is real as opposed to we have a race of sentient aliens that are just suddenly out to kill us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Brutes. Brutes. Well, maybe love the Brutes as Halo too. Uh, cause they play a huge role in Halo 2. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, speaking of Halo 2 and 3 in there, have you played ODST? Yes, quite. Do you remember the part in ODST where you come across all the dead bodies of all the groups and the elites that fought each other? Oh, yeah, yeah, cause they, um, well, if you know anything about Halo lore, the Covenant split, and the grunt sided with the elites, and the Bruce side with the oh got a hunter. Um, well, because the, the elites were originally the the like the uh, the Marines of the Covenant, I guess you could say the the, the original ground force. Uh, I would compare the grunts to probably the army. And they, well, yeah, and the elites were like the most respected, like yeah. Um, Untouchable. Again, if you know anything about Halo, um, the backstory. A fun fact: if the um. The grunts actually end up siding with the elites because the elites respect the grunts, so nobody else respects the grunts. And the reason why is Double that who did the jackals go with? The jackals went with the hunt, the um, groups. Ah, okay. Because the the grunts uh, rebelled against the hunters and the jackals, or not the hunters, the uh, the brutes and the jackals, because um, they were being pretty much mistreated, I guess, 
um, right. Right. to simplify it. And the elites sided with they sided with the elites, um, and the elites actually respect them because they rebelled. Um, so that's cool. Which made me that made me like the uh, grunts a little more because before that I kind of just saw them annoying, annoying, and just there. <laughs> or you shoot them in the head and it goes yay. <laughs> So, since we brought up ODST for a little bit, what were your thoughts on ODST? Because I have a huge opinion about ODST, and it's not its not with the common opinion. So I'll let, you, I'll let you talk about it first, and I'll tell you what I think about it. Um, well, I think the biggest, uh, the most annoying thing about ODST is the health system. Um, although, after, Reach, after playing Reach first, um, did I take them out first, right? Before ODST? No. Okay, uh, well, I think I played Reach before ODST. They came out similar <laughs> times. ODST was the the gateway between 3 and 4. So, uh, oh, dude, I didn't know this dropship came out. I would have used the, uh, the missiles. But anyway. Um, but I like ODST. I like the story. I think it's cool that they... Um, just like Reach, Reach is one of my favorite Halo games. Um, I'm gonna go get this hunter with this. Because the gameplay is excellent, and because it tells you a story that's not Master Chiefs. Yeah. Um, ODST I liked because it wasn't from the viewpoint of the Spartan. So it was different. And like I said, I like I like the lore and stuff on Halo, so um, in terms of that, it's kind of cool because it gives you a backstory to a character that normally you wouldn't really care about or know anything about. Right, right. So, for me, ODST, I love the Dangerous Planet. It was the first time in the Halo series where I guess you could say you didn't feel invincible. Now, if you played the game on Legendary or something, obviously that's not true. But for your casual gamer who played it on obviously like normal or easy, and you're the master chief, you're you feel invincible. I mean, there's no there's no doubt in that. Uh, you just feel like all the enemies that you're facing are pretty much nothing. I mean, besides your few hunters every now and then. But even then, like hunters are stupid. You know what I'm Cannon saying? Fodder. <laughs> yeah. So number one, that's how I feel about it. Two, it was. It was great because I felt for the first time what the human race, because I don't really consider, I mean, I know Spartans are humans, but comparatively, they're more foreign than human, obviously, because they're enhanced. It was like the first time you could feel how like the actual humans felt against it. You were a Marine, and you anything could kill you. I remember spending maybe like an hour and a half on like one level just trying to get past like three groups, like near the end of the game. Because you're so weak. And yeah, your shield is gone so quick. And it, that was that was the cool part about it. Now a lot of people hated that because you know you weren't the master chief, blah blah blah. You know this and that. You know you, you died so fast, but you got to experience the Halo universe, how the Marines feel. We always make fun of the Marines because they're always getting destroyed. But as soon as you're able to play as one, you're like, wow, you know this is this is hard. And I thought it was great. Uh, the lore in the game was cool. Like I said before, when you met the Brutes versus elite sort of area, the one map. I don't know. I loved it. I thought it was. I thought it was cool. It was definitely one of my more favorite games. In the series. Yeah, I wouldn't say. Um, it's funny when I when I think about which games are my favorite. I never actually. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it doesn't really come to mind. Um, it's one. It's one people tend to forget about. We're doing pretty good. I don't think either of us reinforced. Uh, no. So, let's move on to the topic that we're, I guess you could say we're truly here for, considering it's the newest game. Halo 5. So, I'm going to assume that you're more pro than con on Halo 5. Is that, is that, is that um, correct? Would you say, would you say that you prefer it more than you don't prefer it? As opposed to, like, I'm say, just talking overall. Like, if you, if I had to give you a piece of paper right now that said, "Do you like Halo 5?" Would your answer be yes or no? Yes. Okay. So, that being said, if I were given the exact same piece of paper, I would definitely circle no. 
So I'll let you talk about why you like it, I'll talk about why I don't like it, and then we can kind of get into the, you know, the weird things, like the fact that you can buy guns, you can buy guns to use online, I'm just saying, that's microtransactions, but anyway. Alright, so, I like Halo 5, on a simply Halo level. Um, that being said, there are, like, a couple things about it that I don't like. Um, I do like it because, once again, it's a story that, it, well, it introduces some new characters uh, that you don't really know that much about um, outside of the actual video games. I mean, if you're, if you're reading books and all that, if you're reading the lore and all that, you know who the characters are. But it's pretty cool because it introduces um, some new characters. It's also the first game where they talk about there being teams of Spartans. Which, if you read the again, if you read the books in the lore, there's actual um, when Spartans are trained, they train the teams. Um, so it's cool that they implemented that. Um, the multiplayer, in terms of arena, for me, just just like uh, Brian was saying about Halo Four, it feels really smooth and um, and fun. I know a lot of people hate the fact that they added um, any Dallas sites. Um, whereas in the other games you could you could zoom in, but if you got shot, you zoomed out. Let me tell you about aiming up the sights. <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, SWAT and Slayer are like besides four, it's the most fun I've had playing SWAT and Slayer. Um, Double kill. Let's see what else? Um, I do know that they're adding firefight, which makes me more um, if they do do it right, if it's just like reach and like maybe they'll add some new stuff and all that. But, as long as they don't mess that up. Yeah. Um, the forge is the best it's ever been. Um, there's yeah. So many more options than there was before. The forge is definitely phenomenal. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um. That being said, I would say if I had to rate the game, I would give the game. A, maybe a six or a seven. Seven, if I'm, seven between six and seven, I think. Okay. Um, like I said, there's some stuff I dislike, but I'm sure Brian's gonna cover that, so I'll let him talk about what why he doesn't like the game. Okay. Well, the first place I'm gonna start, and I don't know if this is me being nostalgic or just me being an honest gamer. I know that with the PlayStation 4 and, you know, the Xbox One and all that stuff, we're aiming towards a gaming era where you don't sit on the couch like we're doing right now playing with your friends. You don't, that's just not a thing. It's it's getting kind of phased out, I guess you could say, but I feel like a true gamer still enjoys, you know, sitting with their friends and playing a game with split screen. Now, the, Halo has always had split screen. There hasn't been an instance where Halo hasn't had it, and that was what Halo was known for when it first came out. When you think of sitting... Oh, Avatar World. <laughs> when you think of sitting down and playing games with your friends, one of the first games that Double always comes kill. to my mind, and I'm sure other people who play shooters as well, is Halo. Yep. No Definitely. one no one plays, like, split sprint... Like, besides zombies and Call of Duty, no one just is like, yo, let's play split, you know, split screen Call of Duty together and just... And just shoot each other in the face, you know. I mean, unless you're doing trick shots, but even then, it doesn't really happen. So, my first huge problem, I almost just died, my first huge problem with Halo 5 is no split screen. Why? Yeah. Just why? And they said that it's because the frames are locked to the physics and blah blah blah, but you've released how many games? How many Halo games? I get that it's a different developer, but even then, still. You should, you should know, but at, at this point in the game, if you, when you've been a company for that long, you should know how to... You shouldn't need to sacrifice aspects of the game in order to make something else better. There, there has to be a way to balance. I agree, I agree. And uh, let's talk about the aiming down the sights a bit before we even get to the whole story and multiplayer. So the aiming down the sights I was pretty excited for. And here's what made me extremely angry about aiming down sights. Yes, you can aim down the sights, but a lot of the guns don't even have sights worth aiming down. But they're still Halo, Halo-like guns. Uh, two, not only just does it auto-zoom out, 
when you get hit, which I mean some other games Double do that. Kill. They do it a little differently, but Halo does it really bad. This is what is more annoying. Let's say me and you were playing online together, we're playing through the campaign. If you go up next to me and bump me with your Spartan, I zoom out of my aim. Why? Why is that a thing? How am I supposed to take cover behind something like a rock or near you with a worry that if I get bumped, my my aim zooms out? Are you kidding me? Like, I just I can't I can't even I can't even I can't even think about how sad that makes me. But now, let's get into the game itself. Now, Halo Five. Let's be serious. Is Halo kind of five? It's kind of like Halo Four and a half. It's like they made the game to introduce the fact that they're making another game. Yeah, to make a note on that, um, that is one of... Halo 5 is definitely on my ranking of games. Um, probably... Probably close to last, even though I like the game. Because of the story. The story is fun, the game mechanics are cool, the added mechanics are, um... I think are cool. Um, there's some that I don't like. But, in terms of the story, it feels like it's a new company setting up a new trilogy instead of actually making a full game. Which, they could have They could finished the story. They could have easily made the game where you didn't leave it a full hanger. It wasn't an obvious setup for a prequel. Or a sequel. And you felt fulfilled at the end. Yeah. But, no, absolutely, and uh, more on that, when it comes down to it, when I played through the campaign, I felt like it was extremely rushed. First of all, there's boss fights in the campaign, obviously harder enemies, and guess what the boss fight is? It's the exact same enemy over and over. There's no differentiation. You literally have the same exact boss fight multiple times in the game. It's the exact same person, too, and then at one point you have to fight three of him at one time. They couldn't put other enemies, other... I just don't understand, like, why? Why did I have to fight stupid robot guy all the time? I just don't I understand. They, they do kind of explain it, but once again, um, same thing with talking about the Prometheans, where I said they felt cliche. Um, it's another instance where it feels like a cliche. Because he has um, multiple bodies and he's one mind. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it feels like a company not coming up with a good... It's not like Oh, that's really clever. That actually makes a lot of sense. It's more they were really lazy and they didn't feel like making another character. Right. That's how I feel. And don't get me wrong, the boss fights are fun. It, it's a cool boss, but after, especially playing on Legendary, after the second time you beat him, it's it's a chore. You're like, wow, yeah. I have to fight another one plus another one plus another one now? I will admit that the first time you face him, you're like, wow, this is kind of hard and this is a really cool enemy. But the second time... You're like, okay, why am I fighting him again? The third time, and after that, and after that, you're like, I really hate this enemy. Instead oh, yeah. Of, instead of this being a memorable enemy that I'm like, wow, this guy was really hard. It's like, I am so sick of fighting this same guy. Yeah. And then again, I get I get the direction they're heading with it. Like I said, you know, he's one mind of multiple bodies. But if, you're, if you have an enemy as versatile as the Prometheans who are pretty much data, you could do anything. They could have made, like, the craziest... Okay, like, what are those things called? Sentinels? Is that what they're called? Those big wing things? Uh, yeah. Whatever those... Yeah, those things? Why didn't we fight one of those? They're supposed to be the protectors. They're supposed to be protecting Cortana. Why couldn't we have combat one of oh, those? Oh, no, the Guardians. Yeah, the Guardian. Yeah. I remember them saying, in this one, you'll be able to fight the Guardians. Please tell me, at one point in Halo 5, when you fight the Guardians... You fight on a guardian. Yeah, yeah, you do. You fight on one. You fight around one. You fight through one. You never actually <laughs> fully. You never actually physically yourself fight a guardian. No. Uh, no. One you escape from. One you climb off. But the, even the escape, but, you don't even feel like it's not like one of those games where you play and you're like, oh man, like if I don't, if I screw up, I'm gonna die. Yeah, kind of like it's eh. not like a <laughs> we're fleeing this guardian because he's such a badass and oh my god, we're going for it now we're gonna die. It's like yeah, another guardian. Yeah, gotta leave. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like it's like when the the relative that comes in 
that you don't like is at the party and you're like, oh, I just kind of got to, I kind of got to go, yeah. So, now touching more on the story, another thing that I really disliked about it was Blue Team. Now, I lo I like Blue Team, I like the books, I, get I like the concept, but why? where did they come from? And how did this happen? And why is this not explained? They were on a shield world. Master Chief doesn't bring, like, hey, I'm with my friends again. Like, wh where did you get them from? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's, it's almost as if they introduce Locke's team um, well. Because there's a few cutscenes where they talk about, like, oh, yeah. we gotta go do this, we have a mission. And then Lucy and they're just like, uh, we're here, and we kind of, I guess we are just expecting you guys to know who these people are and why I'm with them. Yeah, so first of all, if you've never read the book, you're like, who is, who are these people? You know, they're dumb. There's no, there's no nostalgia from it. But if you have read the books, then you're on the whole thing, like, where did they, where, how did they get here? Why are they here? Why is this not explained? And it's like, the way they make it seem in the game is as if they never were lost in the shield world. It was like they were always there the whole time, because not once do they mention any sort of like, oh, I was here, I was there. It was like they were there the whole time. It was like they just ignored that whole canon part of the Halo series. Which is fine when you're, like, Disney taking over Star Wars, and you're like, you know, well, the movies are canon, but nothing else is. There's a certain direction that we want to go with it. Yeah. Which makes sense, but when you say, like, these are actual canon material, and then you're just like, don't give an explanation for anything. What? Yeah. Well, they, they probably knew that a lot of people didn't read the books, and I mean, yeah, I get it, they came out a long care. time ago, but um, even then, you have fans, for, most of Halo fans are the ones, if not even in their 30s at this point, so the majority of your fan base is going to be like, dude, seriously? And they just didn't care, they just didn't care. Now, uh, here's, <laughs> here's another thing as well. Reinforced. The besides the whole you know, the blue team and this and that, let's talk about fighting the Master Chief. Let's talk about that. I played this <laughs> game I played this game with the ex expectation that I would have a battle with the Master Chief. I didn't care what side I was on at that point. I didn't care if I had to play as Locke, I didn't care if I had to play as the Master Chief. I wanted to have some Spartan versus Spartan action. I thought it would be amazing. And this is what you get. You get a cutscene, you get a freaking cutscene that you can't even control. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a cool cutscene, but it couldn't even be a quick time event. Like, yo, let me press buttons, so I'm at, so I at least feel like I'm in the fight. You you bring out all this stuff before Halo 5 coming out saying, you know, insinuating the Master Chief's a traitor, blah, 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 and what you get in the game is like, it's not that. It's not that whatsoever. It's, it's not even like a struggle. It's, it's like... Think, thinking Double about all the points you made at this point so far, it, it almost feels as like the story was just lazy. Yeah. Because it's not even like there's a struggle where he's like, no, you're wrong. And Master Chief's like, no, you're wrong. And he's like, what do you mean I'm wrong? And he's like, explains it. And like, there's an actual discussion. It's like, you you betrayed us. And like, you're you're not with us anymore. And then Master Chief's like, nah, that's not true. And he's like, okay. Yeah. And exactly. you escape, and then he's not even like, go after them, he's just like, you know, like, we're just gonna do this together now. Cause... Pretty much, and then at that point, you're kind of on the same side, give or take. I mean, sorta, kinda, but you're pretty much on the same side at that point. You know, you're, you're going after the enemy, which, by the way, the enemy is someone that they should have never made an enemy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. After you... Okay, so, on that point... I like the idea of Cortana going crazy. Going rogue? But going she rogue goes like, going. she goes crazy rogue. <laughs> yeah. But it would have made sense. It could have made so much more sense if the simple fact had been that Master Chief was the main character of the game. Because yep. it, w it would have been so much more. Like, think about 3 and about 4 and how hard he works to save Cortana. And, like, how emotionally attached they are to each other. Right. And then in 5, you're like, she's rogue, and you play 3, I think, only 3 out of 15 missions is Master Chief. If they had actually put the time in and made at least, like, half the game about Master Chief and that struggle... Because, like, I mean, in those few missions, he's like, wow, this is, like, a hard decision. And they're like, are you gonna do the right thing when time comes? And he's like, yeah, you know me, I always do that. Yep. But, like, you never... You, you very, very, very 
loosely feel emotionally connected anymore. Whereas in the other games, they were like, Cortana's my bitch, like, yep. like, we stick together no matter what, I gotta save her, like, it's not... Yeah, you're, going, you're diving into the hive mind yeah, with just, the flood to get her out, and now you're just kind of like, eh. You just don't care, it, it's like, it's like an afterthought. <laughs> yeah. And another thing, really, is <laughs> with her being... <sighs> okay, so you play through the campaign, and if you played it on Legendary, and I know you, everyone out there probably knows where I'm going, is, is you played it on Legendary to unlock a cutscene at the end of the game. And this cutscene is, I would say, what, maybe maybe eight, was it like eight seconds or something like it's that? It's eight seconds, and it's very vague, and it's like, now I'm even more confused. Now, we can take a whole video talking about what we think it would be. But pretty much what it is, it's, it's Cortana whistling like 343 Guilty Spark did. Um, which is the dude who went to destroy the rings. Or activate the rings, right? Then, yeah, something like that. Anyway, I forgot this gun should take this. So, oh boy. I played, well, we all did actually. We did co op and solo that entire campaign, which was extremely hard on Legendary. Extremely hard. It, I, it was a, almost unbearable at times, especially when you're fighting Mr. Robotic times three. Yeah, I think, um, to put it in perspective, between me and Brian and two other and one other person playing co-op Legendary, and then me playing co-op alone Legendary, uh, that alone was about 46 hours. Yeah. It um, was no joke. For two, for two campaigns. So... That kind of gives you an idea of how hard it is. And you get this cutscene at the end, which I get it. It's like, if, if the theories are correct, you know, the whistling 343, like, she's probably going to try to activate the rings. Which is, I get it. That's cool, but one, that also seems lazy, because I guess, what are you recycling the story of Halo now? Am I going to go after Cortana 343? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, it just feels, like, again, making the same point, it feels lazy. Yeah. So, oh. We've hammered the story enough. Now let's talk about the multiplayer. I hate, I hate the multiplayer. I hate the multiplayer more than anything. And this is why. The game modes that Eric mentioned, like SWAT and stuff, they're, it's fine. That's fine. They, they work well. They're not amazing. I would probably give them maybe like a 6 out of 10. If I'm being generous. Let's talk about problem number one. Problem number one is Warzone. There's two reasons why I hate Warzone. Number one... It's AI mixed with multiplayer, which could have been awesome if they didn't do it like whoever kills the enemy gets the points, because this is what happens. 90% of the time you play Warzone, you're fighting, you're killing the AI, you're killing Hunter Jack, whatever the dumb names they give them are, and Hunter Jack's about to die, and then Mr. Red on the red team, seeing you're the blue team, snipes Hunter Jack in the mouth, and Hunter Jack's now dead. And you did 99.9% .9 of damage, and Mr. Sniper did 0.01% damage, and guess who gets the points? The guy who killed him. The guy who killed him. They could have literally done a damage system where, like, if you did 80%, you get 80% of the points. Something. That would just made sense. I just, I don't, I don't understand. It, it, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling to think about um, when you're... It's it's a it's a multiplayer game. It's supposed to be co-op. You're supposed to be working together to do those things. Yes. The fact that one person can just really nearly shoot their sniper rifle one time and kill an enemy and get the credit for it is kind of counterproductive to you know like it makes you say when you're playing Warzone you're like why am I even bothering to do this you're because if much I get shot yeah. once and die and they they kill it they like hit it last like all that work I did for the last ten minutes. Like it's meaningless. The way the way it almost feels is you're playing not cooperatively. I mean, if you're playing with friends, it's different. But it's like you're playing with a bunch of people who are playing lone wolf style, and it's just whoever whoever gets the perfect shot off at the right time is typically the team who wins because they get the most points. And then my next point about why I don't like multiplayer is microtransactions. You have these kids, or even adults, who are spending all this money to get rec packs, and they have... I got killed... The last time I played, I got killed by... I think it was a, like, a DMR, or, I don't know, something like that, and it was, like... It was the... It shoots the, like, the beam? You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. It killed me in two shots. Two 
shot. That is ridiculous. And I guarantee he didn't earn it. I guarantee he didn't earn it. They probably that, bought it out of a rec pack. The, the rec pack system is probably the worst thing about Halo, the Halo series. The whole series, the whole history of Halo. Um, I, I get it. I get why they did it. Um, because people will do it. People will buy it. Um, which isn't a good reason, but it's a reason. Um, my biggest problem with it is it could have been balanced so much better. Yeah. Like Brian was just explaining, uh, getting killed by somebody who, I mean, who probably bought the, the gun, the rec pack, um, instead of earning it, is frustrating. Uh, especially when it happens a lot. Like, it's not something that happens, you know, once in a while. It happens a lot. Um, if they had made it so that rec packs were contained in assassination animations and yeah. armors and weapon skins for Tommy Gun, but to put to put a package up where for fifty dollars, well, especially for kids whose parents will just give them their credit card. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, to get like sixty gold packs, which recommend, which like automatically gives you some cool armor, which is fine, and some. Rare weapons. That's that's when it gets rushed. Because yeah. you're walking around with a uh, let's say a battle rifle, and this like there's people walking around with like uh, with grenade launchers and plasma beams and like anything you could think of like. And it's then they, so bad. And then they come up with it in a tank, and you're like, I know you didn't earn that. You know how hard it is to get a tank. All right, hold on. The game. Stop right there. Let me. I'm gonna tell you both of my experiences of using a tank. I've only ever tried to use a tank twice. This is exact. This is exactly how it went. I got super happy. I'm like, oh man, I finally got all my wreck points. I'm about to roll out the tank. People are about to go down. I'm about to get the upper hand over my team. But, but this is how it really went. I pulled out of my my base. Oh god, I know what you're about to say. I pulled out of my base to find that a man jumped on top of me and blew up my tank instantly. He jumped on top of me, mounted my tank, and killed me. So you didn't actually say what I was going to say, what I thought you were going to say. The second worst part about Warzone in the rec system, besides the fact that you can pay for them, is the fact that you spend, okay, if you if you earn your rec packs like, like normal, without buying them, you get 10,000 points, and you're like, okay, I'm about to get a gold pack, I'm about to get something cool, and maybe you get, like, a tank or two, or, like, um, like a really good vehicle. So, what happens is, you, you're like, wow, I'm doing really good right now, I'm feeling good, you roll out with a vehicle, you roll with a tank, or, like, a ghost, or, like, whatever, yep. and you get 20 feet out of your base, and you get assassinated, or somebody pulls you out of your vehicle and steals it. Now, I understand in normal gameplay, if there's vehicles like Big Team Battle, why you'd be able to steal someone else's vehicle. But if somebody works so hard to get a vehicle, why would you let people be able to pull them out and use it? Yeah. Yeah. Why not let them pull them out and them not, like, they're dead? They have to go back and try to get a vehicle that has, like, a cooldown timer or something if you don't get to it a certain amount of time it disappears. Um, but for me to spend a lot of time, like, unlocking, like, a wreck pack to get a ghost and then I use the ghost and then two seconds later somebody else is the ghost repeatedly killing me with it, yeah. it just makes me want to, it just makes me want to the game. But, like, I'm like, why do I feel like this is meaningless? I feel like. I'm yeah, it's so hard to do nothing. It's it's true though, and when the game first came out, it wasn't as bad. But now, since the game has been out for a bit, and skull uh, on oh, we got a bone shark. Now, since the game has been out for a bit, and it's got to the point where people continuously keep buying wreck packs, it's like if you if you didn't have the game when it first came out and play every single time you had the chance, or spend. Well, I think some guy did. The map for it. Like, yeah, it was like 262 hours or something to earn every single one. Yeah, or if you win every game. Yeah, yeah, if you win every game, and or you can just swipe your credit card or your debit card, you know, through, and just have all of it and pretty much be good, good to go. Which is why new players are gonna just gonna hate it. Which you know, you you think about it, and you're like, wow, that doesn't happen. Like, 
do that. There's people that do that. There's there's a lot of people that do that. They just swipe their credit card and they're like, I have everything in the game. I'm so cool. I have, I'm the oh, yeah. best. Like, like nobody can beat me. And then they just sit there like destroying everybody because no one can do anything. Yeah. And again, when it comes down to multiplayer play, the game doesn't play bad, and that's the worst part about it. There was potential for a good multiplayer game, and they ruined it. And when the game first came out, I remember, I remember we were in an Xbox Live party together, and we, we turn it on, we're we're talking, we're super excited, and I remember Dan being there, and he says, "Where's Forge?" Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't include Forge originally with the game. Now, okay. Now I don't care who you are. If you are the people who make Halo. You include Forge in the game. game. You could have did an update to it. You, I don't even care. You, you put it in, and it's Forge is really good. Oh my god, we beat it. <laughs> Forge is really good, but that's no excuse. There's no excuse to, you know, go to that point, and I don't know. It's just dumb. But I guess overall, it comes down to the point that I just really dislike the game. I feel like it was rushed. I feel like uh, it's Halo. You know, four and a half. And there's going to obviously be another one. And there's just so many things that ruins it, ruins it for me. Um, yeah. And to bring my idea to a close, um, I did like the game. Um, I felt like for what I spent on it, uh, the campaign was at least uh, fine. Um, especially to play with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do enjoy hopping on and just playing a bunch of games of Slayer and SWAT. Um, the ranking system's a little... I don't I. Oh my don't, God. I don't even want to get started on the ranking system because the video right now is already at 40 minutes and I could talk for another 20 minutes about that. Yep. Oh, yeah. um, but. Well, you're going to cover Halo 5 soon, so. Yeah, I'll talk about that then. Um, I'll probably also going to play some multiplayer and I'll probably talk over that video. Um, but Arena and SWAT, um, or Slayer and SWAT, super fun to play. Um, Warzone, I, I don't really play it at all. Yeah, no. Uh, it's just frustrating. Um. The other point I wanted to make is that Fire the fire. introduction of rec packs and microtransactions in the game Terrible. takes out one of the key Terrible. points of Halo for me, which was if you played Reach or if you played 4 or if you played 3, um, you know, pretty much any of them, but especially Reach and 4. You would go up to somebody playing multiplayer and be like, wow, that is some cool-ass armor. Like, yeah. I wonder what they had yeah. to do to get that armor. Or like, wow, I've seen that armor when I was looking through the menu. That was really hard to get. Like, that person must be really good at Halo. And now it's like, that person randomly got that armor pack, and they could suck at Halo and have, like, the best, coolest Kill looking armor in Halo. Like, like, no, seriously, it's it so takes out a, It takes out... Like, an important part of Halo multiplayer, which was, you earn your rewards, and people could see how good you were, and how much time you spent on the game based on what you were. Yeah. Halo, Halo Reach did that the best. Um, I can't believe they would, they would do something like that. I just, I don't know. But I mean, overall, it's not a terrible game by any means. I don't, I wouldn't say it's exactly a Halo game. I would say it's... I feel like they're trying to cater to a different crowd and not cater fans. I know that like Call of Duty and all that stuff is big now. Reinforce. Yeah, it feels it feels more like they're trying to cater to a younger generation who doesn't really care as much about story. Yeah. Um, and cares more about playing online with their friends. Um, whereas, like Brian said earlier in the video, you miss the days when uh, I'm and I'm sure everyone who used to play does, where you would sit on a couch and play Halo for five hours with your friends and be like, you know, I'm actually having a personal interaction with somebody instead of looking at a screen right. with a headset on. Like, it's a, it's a totally different feeling. And that's what younger kids these days are used to. It's kind of sad. Yeah, I mean, Eric's going to be covered more of the Halo series. Like you said, he's going to be doing some multiplayer. Um, I don't know if he's doing any campaign footage, but he's going to explain more about the game and show you then. Uh, but I mean, it's it's crazy, because if you look back to when we started the conversation, you can see and hear our passion about playing the original Halo games, and, you know, how exciting they were, the first experience of this and that, and then coming to a thing now where we're older and more mature, so we can experience things even better, and just being like, 
you know, I waited, I waited this long for Halo 4.5, aka Halo 5, and I'm given this. I'm given something that is Halo on the surface, but underneath is, is a completely different style of game. It's upsetting. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it feels like, uh, it feels like a watered-down experience of like the, the older games, oh, yeah. like the older games are like, wow, I just saved the world and the galaxy and the human race, and like I work with these people and these people are cool and I like them because of this and this person I really really like this is my favorite character ever, and then the new one you're like, this story is okay and I don't really feel a connection to anybody, new. especially not yeah. Master Chief. You ever played the other games? You would think that Master Chief is like a side bug. Like, yeah. They focus a little too much on Locke. Also, not to mention that when the game first starts, it's disgustingly ugly. And I mean, I'm not huge into graphics, but like, graphically compared, if you look at the end of the game compared to the beginning of the game for some reason, the beginning of the game is like super blocky, and everything looks really sharp and edgy, and then as, as you progress through the levels, it gets smoother, and I just don't, I don't get it. I remember when we found that secret grunt singing. That, oh, le yeah. that level was beautiful. It looks so good, but like the game doesn't look good until you're halfway in, and I just don't understand how that happens. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. But then again, you know, overall, hopefully it gets improved in the future. Maybe this was just a gateway game to the next Halo. I mean, oh, I killed you. I am so sorry. Anyway. But that being said, yeah, it could be a gateway. <laughs> I did not mean to kill you. But yeah, so Eric's gonna be covering more of Halo 5. Yeah, that was my fault, so you can't come. Uh, Eric's gonna be covering more of Halo 5 in the future. His videos are gonna be up probably pretty soon within the next uh, week or two. And uh, I hope you like our discussion. If you do, comment on other games you'd like us to discuss. We've typically played mostly everything. And if we haven't, we could definitely go give it a try. So this is Brian from Are You Game. And this is Eric. And we will see you next time. Oh, I died! <laughs> right at the end.